This is incredible. Okay, so when do we need to sell our houses and move to Adam on Diamond? See, that's what I need to know. Time doesn't actually exist, clocks do. All of this is centered around Jesus Christ. So here's when Quaker needs to start to repent, okay? Exactly right. Oh, fascinating, and it con exactly corresponds right. with the Jubilee calendar's mid-year. This okay. is so intriguing. What are these seven seal deals going on? This book that's sealed on the backside with seven seals, what does that even mean? And the inspired answer that Joseph Smith gives is that it's the 7,000 years of the Earth's temporal existence. Welcome back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Carden Ellis. I'm joined in the studio by Sean Bailey, author of a super cool book called Signs of the Second Coming. You guys got to check it out. He also has a podcast. I'm also joined by none other than Kwaku L and Brad Whitbeck. And we've got a super cool subject we're talking about today. Everybody knows some of the, the clickbait of the book of Revelation, including the lost 10 tribes of Israel, who's the false prophet, who's the beast, so on and so forth. But the one of the other- horsemen. The four, the four horsemen, horsemen. Of the apocalypse. you know, there's all these great characters and all these great artifacts. Well, one of the predominant ones are the seven seals of the book of Revelation. Uh, what do they represent? Who are they? What are they? When are they? So on and so forth. Here to illuminate our minds is the author, the uh, proverbial writer of the book on the book of Revelation and the second coming, Sean Bailey, who's going to tell us what's up with the seven seals. So Sean, illuminate our minds, man. What, what are the seven seals? What do they mean? What do they represent? Um, give us, give us, you know, seven seals 101, my man. Yeah. When people talk about the seven seals, there are so many different interpretations, so many different guesses really about what they are. Mm. We got to go to Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith knew Right. So we oh, go yeah. to section 77 of the document. By the way, I'm sorry to interrupt you really yeah, fast, sure. but is it true Joseph Smith said that for those that have the spirit of revelation, the book of revelation is the easiest book to understand? The plainest book ever written. Really? So what's the Dang. full quote? What's the full quote? He, he, that's what he said. He said the, the book of revelation is the plainest book ever written. Whoa, that's cool. Okay. I have no idea what he, he's talking about. He should about. have said the plainest what? book ever written. For me, because everyone else is yeah. completely confused. They have yeah. no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so hit us. We're going to Joseph Smith to answer. What are these seven seals? Hit us. So in section 77, it's a cool chapter because, or a section of the Doctrine and Covenants, because it's a question and answer. So they literally got together. I don't know who's asking the questions or where they came from, but someone is asking questions about the symbolism in the first half of the book of Revelation. And one of the questions is, what are the seven seals? What are these seven seal deals going on? This book that's sealed on the backside with seven seals, what does that even mean? And the inspired answer that Joseph Smith gives is that it's the 7,000 years of the earth's temporal existence, meaning time, right? From the beginning of time to the end of time, 7,000 years of temporal existence, it's the hidden things of God's economy. So anything that's not like, what, like a social security card and like a visa or like, well, well, like the affairs, the affairs of God that the world in general doesn't know about. Right. OK, so cool. the Rock things on. that the world would not recognize as coming from God. OK. OK. Hmm. And those those seven seals are a thousand years apiece. So there was another question. Well, what does each seal represent? And the the answer was each one represents a thousand years. Well, also, what's the why? Because like, why do these seven seals matter to us? We know that when the seventh seal is broken, that's the opening of the latter days, right? And we're in that seventh seal right now. Well, the sixth we, seal, actually. Yeah, that's the sixth. Yeah, so the sixth seal is when the restoration happens. Oh, at least the beginning of it. The yeah. seventh seal opens the millennium. Right. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Wow. You guys are so much farther ahead than I am. Okay. Keep going. Sean. All right. Let's do the one on one. So when you talk about the the why is a great question. So why do we have seven seals? Seven is used in symbolism all throughout the Book of Revelation, mm -hmm. and in symbology, the number seven represents completeness or a finishing of something. And specifically, when Joseph Smith is interpreting this, he says mm -hmm. the seventh seal is the preparing and the finishing of God's work. Okay, so the seven seals are 
all a completeness of God's work from the beginning of time until the end of time. Okay. Okay. So each thousand year period is a thousand years. And when we talk about a thousand years, you almost automatically go to the to the quote. You mean from, each seal is a thousand years? Did, what did I say? Yeah, you yeah. said every thousand years is a thousand years. Well, yeah, that's. I was <laughs> like, you know, I was well, like, that, okay. that makes a lot of sense. Honestly. Yeah, this yeah. Is, it's totally true. This is the one hundred and one. The one hundred and one. <laughs> one thousand <laughs> equals one thousand. Uh, so each seal is a thousand years. Okay, and that kind of harks back to the quote from Peter in Second Peter, where he says. A day for the Lord is a thousand years to man. Mm. So you could say, in in addition to saying it's a thousand, a seven thousand years, you could also say it's seven days. Oh, right? that's intriguing. Yeah. So symbolic of like one week, the seven seals, if they represented one day, like you said, exactly. Peter said, yeah, wow, like Peter. it would be the one week of the Lord. Exactly hey, but then right. should the last day be a day of rest, though? You know, it is a day that's, of rest. That's what the millennium is. That's what the millennium is. Oh, snap. It's a day of rest. Okay. Absolutely, 100%. Dude, this is blowing my mind already. I'm loving it. This is the Lord's work week. Yeah, exactly okay, cool. Right. That's All exactly right. right, hit it, hit it, hit it. So when you have the final day, the seventh day of the Lord, you have to see all of those. When you look through the scriptures, you see all of those references again and again and again, where it says the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is the seventh day or the seventh seal or the 7,000 years or the millennium, okay? All of those are the same thing. It's all the same thing. Mm-hmm. When you want to understand the second coming, you have to understand the seventh day. You have to because over and over and over again, it says before the day of the Lord, in the day of the Lord, at the day of the Lord, during the day of the Lord, mm. if you don't understand that the day of the Lord is that last 7,000 years, then you're not going to understand anything about the mm. second coming. Okay. okay. So that's super important. One of the examples of that is in Joel chapter two. In Joel chapter two, it says, before the day of the Lord come, there will be the sun darkened, the moon turned to blood, and there will be blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. Okay. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And this was quoted by Moroni to Joseph Smith. It absolutely was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we knew they didn't screw that one up. You know who else quoted it? Who? Gordon B. Hinckley. Oh, yeah. In October conference 2001, a month after 9-11, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. And he said, this prophecy has been fulfilled. Oh, snap. No, no Shadamas also predicted that when he said there shall be fire in the new city. Some of the, like like, like the buildings, New York? Yeah, destroyed and there'll be fire in the new city. Dude, that is because the new city is New Amsterdam, right? So, or well, New York. Okay, so I'm just going to do something really fast. Just sure. rapid fire. This. Rapid, yeah. I want to rapid fire you some questions really fast. First seal. What is it in one sentence? Adam. Okay, second and, seal. And so you identify them by dispensation heads? Well, you can. It's And it doesn't line up perfectly, right? And, okay, but, but we're just simplifying. Literally okay. the first simplifying thousand years is Adam's lifetime. He was 936 years old when he died, right? Mm. So that first thousand years is Adam. Oh, and nice opposite to Christ being the seventh. Exactly, the right? Yeah. The seventh. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, then yeah. what's the second seal, my man? The second seal is basically um, the dispensation of Noah, the flood time, the Tower of Babel, that kind of thing. Okay, third seal. What's third the third seal? Third seal is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Okay, cool. Fourth? Moses, Solomon, David. Actually, it's more of the kings because um, I think Solomon was around, what, 900, 995 or something? Okay. Around that time. So then fifth and sixth? So the fifth seal is after after a period that was not hidden, okay? So when it talks about the hidden things of God's economy, there was one period of time that was never hidden. It was prophesied freely from the beginning by all prophets, and Jacob talks about this. He says all prophets have prophesied about this from the very beginning. The great apostasy. No. Oh, no, what? Christ's life, Christ's life and ministry, his birth, his death, his resurrection. So which one was the Bronze Age? I've heard some people say like Iron Age was the third seal. Bronze Age was the fourth seal. That would have been the fourth seal. Oh, okay, cool. So you basically think the seals coincide to uh, patriarchs or founding fathers of the faith, shall we say, or dispensation heads as Brian calls it. I think it literally is thousand year periods. Like just, you can line it up with whoever was in that thousand years, Mm -hmm. but I think it's literal thousand year periods to the day, to the day. 
Mm. Interesting. I don't believe that God approximates. You know, like there's a ton of people, they'll, they'll go in there and they'll say, well, it's been about 2,000 years since such and such, or it's been about 1,000 years or such and such. I do not believe God works that way. Why does he need to? Why does he have to approximate? He well, doesn't. He well, doesn't have to approximate because we're the ones with the screwed up calendars. Exactly right. Well, and also, <laughs> but here's here's my here's my only pushback on that idea of like he does not approximate. Okay, that's romantic. It's cute. Like, there's no such thing as coincidence. I, I believe the one person that said hello to me at the hot dog stand was like, you know God was telling me to say <laughs> hello to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, sure. I get that. That that that's that's cute. It's romantic. It's it's great. And and I'm not trying to disregard it, even though I sound like I am. I'm not. You know. Um, I've kind of always viewed the second coming as a thing that is dependent less upon Kronos and time as it is upon the righteousness of the people. Because if I learn anything from the pride cycle in the Book of Mormon, isn't it kind of that like the more righteous they were, the more they postponed the next invasion of the Lamanites and the next and destruction and the sure. next everything. And you see the same pattern with Abraham, right? Yeah. And when the angels visit Abraham and they have several days that they would have normally destroyed him. Uh, they, they were going to destroy the city, right? So there are certain parts to the second coming that are absolutely dependent on our righteousness. Like, okay, but but then if they are and it's dependent upon us, doesn't then this idea that God does not approximate, well, what if we could be righteous for a week longer than regular? Well, well, well let that, me finish you know, let me like, throw what I was saying. Okay. So there are parts that are absolutely dependent on our righteousness, like the building of the city of Zion, for example. Mm -hmm. what's, what's stopping us? But there are many parts to the second coming that are absolutely set in stone according to the day that God has foreordained will be exactly this way. Okay? Wow. Okay, so, so it's okay. a little bit of both. It's, it's absolutely both. I gotcha. think, one, it's because God is not operating on linear time, like we assume. Okay, um, that's fair. That's all things fair. are happening at once. Yeah, and, and linear time is for us. It's it's a gift for in us. In fact, we don't want to get too. Time doesn't actually exist. Clocks do, but that's a different. That's, is that, no, yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. Time only is defined by how you measure it. Yeah. That's that's it. Yeah, time right? itself is not really. But then, what look, me, I use the Gregorian three sixty five. I don't know what you communists think, but I'm going to stick over here. Oh, uh, phantom just, time. No, <laughs> okay. three sixty five point two five. No, three sixty five point two five because we have a leap year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's There's true. also that's true. though, um, when you think about the dispensations this way, thinking about. I like to look at them as empires. So you have Eden, Zion, okay. the Flood, Babylon, Egypt, Rome, America. Sure. Which makes it creepier. Oh, which makes it a lot scarier. Uh, so if you say yeah. something really quiet like, America. Well, then we would be like the, the Jews turned Christians that were living in Jerusalem or in Rome. Like, I mean, the Apostle Paul taught to the early Christian church in Rome. And if Rome. It also means that we're going to fall soon. Ooh, that's not good. Because we're near the end. We're not only Babylon, we're Babylon the Great, which shall fall. Well, we yeah. are. So, okay, so the, then the question arises, which seal are we in, right? Are yeah, we well, you were the saying the seal? fifth and the sixth. What was the fifth and the sixth? The fifth is the first thousand years after Christ. Okay. And then, and then the sixth is the second thousand years after Christ. the second Christ. thousand and, years where the restoration happens. And so Christ is at the very end of the fourth seal, beginning of the fifth? Christ is not part of the seals. So he's in, in a period of time called the meridian of time. Mm -hmm. And all time is centered oh, around him. Every, all of it. Mm -hmm. So everything before was a precursor to him. Everything after was a witness of him, right? So all of this is centered around Jesus Christ. And Is this when I pull up the cool graphic that you put in the Discord, yeah, bro? Yeah, throw that up there. Okay, cool. There. So here's the meridian of time. I'm digging this, man. I'm totally digging this. Let's hit it. Okay, so this is, this is a model of what is called the Jubilees calendar. Oh, yeah. Okay? There's a book of Jubilees where they outline how all of the priests in the temple are going to work. And they basically take an entire year and they divide it into 49 day pieces. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't, the math doesn't work, right? Yeah. Um, when you divide it up into these 49 days, the 50th day is a Jubilee. And for those of us that are uh, listening in the radio, um, it, it starts with the end year, seven days, and there's the plant, then there's the, so there's the plant phase of 49 days. So it begins days. in spring. Yeah, and then there's the water it does. phase. yeah, that's right, yeah. 
Okay, so there's a plant phase of 49 days. There's the water days. Uh, oh, sorry. There's a water phase of 49 days. The nourish phase of 49 days. The tend phase of 49 days. The grain phase of 49 days around the mid year. Then there's the vines phase of 49 days, and then the all uh, the burn of seven days, and the 49 days of olives, and that that's the cycle completed right there in all seven segments. Yeah, and for those okay. of you who are just listening. Yeah. There are seven segments, but then there is a little section, a little season, so to speak, in between mm. the fourth and the fifth. There's a little season in between the sixth and the seventh. And then there's a little season at the, at the very end. This okay. is so intriguing. Yeah. Like this is incredible. Carden, can you put it back up and yeah, drag absolutely. it over to the side a little bit so we can see the seven seasons? Oh, I'm going to give you the whole thing right here, man. Just so everybody can just see everything in all of its grandeur. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So the reason why this is intriguing is because it is not related to the second coming at all, but it provides a pattern for the seven seals. Oh, so the meridian of time is not like in the middle of yeah, of a seal. Of a seal. It is between the fourth and the fifth seal. Exactly right. Oh, fascinating. And it con exactly corresponds right. with the Jubilee calendar's mid year. Exactly right. Of a different seven day week. That's so fascinating. the the period after the mid year period it doesn't include that mid-year period. It's afterwards. So you have this little section. In it's the like an of the intermission calendar. in the movies. The intermission isn't during the second half and isn't during the first half. It's just the intermission. Exactly right. Yeah. At like Washington, D.C. is an estate. It's just, you know, the District of Columbia. And so Christ comes at the meridian of time. And here's what's interesting is you missed this last time, Kwaku. But one of the big discoveries that Don Bradley had about the translation of the plates with Joseph Smith was about it being done at the Passover time in conjunction with the 40 year period and the celebration of Jubilees or what I, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I can't regurgitate everything that he uh, he said. But um, yeah, th th that was intriguing. So anyway, keep going, Sean. So let me give you an example of that really quick. So when we say that God, when I say that God does not approximate, one of the perfect examples of that was the prophecy from Nephi and Lehi that Christ will come 600 years after my father leaves Jerusalem mm -hmm. to the day, to the day. If, if Lehi and Nephi and their family left Jerusalem during Passover and Christ was born on the Passover, ah. it was literally 600 years to the day, mm. to the day. God does not approximate. Another example, Samuel the Lamanite. He's standing up in front of the Nephites on the wall. They're trying to hit him with arrows, right? He says, five more years cometh, and then the sign will be given of his birth. Mm -hmm. And the, then there's arguments about the day. Yeah. And they're going to kill all of the believers. On that day. Yeah. It was to the day. Uh-huh. The, the unbelievers were counting the days literally until mm. it was five years exactly from the time that Samuel said it would happen. And Samuel, why would he not get up there on the Passover when everybody's out in the street, everybody's celebrating, they're all having a feast. That is the best time to talk to people on a wall, right? So exactness is absolutely a part of the prophecies of the second coming. Wow. Okay, cool. So we've got the meridian of time here. And then there's this really cool other uh, hip graphic that you have in which Christ is in between the fourth and the fifth seal between his birth and his resurrection. For those that are listening on the radio, we now have a seventh seal here. Okay. Um, in which there's a very interesting division. Okay. In between 4001 BC, which is the proverbial beginning of time with Adam and Eve, all the way up till the end of time in the seventh 1000 year. All right. Um, that does again, even in linear fashion, correspond hmm. perfectly with um, the period of, of jubilees or of harvest or right. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the already existing agricultural cycle that the ancient Jews recognized. Mm. Yeah, they used it as an agricultural calendar and also as a priest calendar. Yeah. The priests would follow this calendar in their assignments in the temple. Yeah. Okay, so when do we need to sell our houses and move to Adam on Diamond? See, that's what I need to know because. Well, no, honestly, <laughs> right now, because there's great prices on housing in the. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you I'm can glad buy you a bring mansion. it up. You sell your house in California, you can buy a mansion in Missouri. I'm just saying. Sean saying. is actually a real estate salesman in Missouri. And so this is the point I have a realtor's whole... license in Missouri. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I want to talk to you. It's like the <laughs> anti-Mormons are always like, oh, I offer counseling services for people that are leaving high demand religions. I also simultaneously and in an unrelated fashion produce anti-Mormon content so that, that you teaches can leave you. your religion. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly yeah, right. there's no conflict of interest here and I'm not grifting off of people's misery. But anyway, okay, this is so intriguing. So we are now in, you say what seal are we in again We're right in the sixth seal still. And the reason that we know that is because there are certain things that happen have to happen before the great and terrible day of the Lord, okay? Mm-hmm. For example, in the Book of Mormon, it says that the new Jerusalem will be built first before the great day of the Lord. In section 45, it gives us a timeline that there will be Jews who are converted to the Lord in Jerusalem before the seventh seal, before that great day of the Lord, before the day of the Lord. And then when do we know that seventh seal opens? We got like another 90 seconds here before our heart out. Like when do we know that seventh seal is getting blown wide open and it's about to go off? The party is about to start and we're going to we're going to be rocking, you know? All right. So here's when Quaker needs to start to repent. Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) He said that last time. I was just Um, But when Christ comes to Zion, when he stands on Mount Zion Mm -hmm. and the city of Enoch comes down, that is the beginning of the seventh seal. Well, I I figure we won't miss that one. I'm pretty sure we're we're, we're, we're not going to miss that one. Well, I hope I don't miss that one. Okay. Yeah. So aliens. What's that? Uh, aliens. I was waiting for that. Is that why we're getting all of these freaking UFO hearings? Project Bluebeam. Yeah, that's uh, a different thing. That that's a fake. Well, I don't know vision. if we find out all these UFOs are real, like the military saying, bro, and they can't explain it. Isn't yeah, that the it, city of Enoch coming down? It, it, those that's are, one big space station, how could brother. You not think that was alien. Like if you don't know anything about the gospel, how could you not think that was alien? I just want to make clear mm. so the audience knows those UFOs are made by America, and the aliens. It's called Project Blue Beam. Joshua Davidson talked about this in the 90s. They're going to fake an alien invasion exactly. as a way to usher in a new world order. I actually believe that. Oh, right. No, no. <laughs> I actually do I mean, believe that. This, did, did Project this show? Blue Beam is a, like actual CIA document, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, this has been, and, yeah. It's and completely. so it's like the thing where they're like, we're going to fake an alien invasion. It's a invasion. false flag. It's a false it, flag operation. Yeah, Dude, only so. on this show can we go from talking about the beautiful cycle of jubilees and the agricultural ca- calendar of the ancients, and then within 30 seconds be endorsing <laughs> an alien invasion psyop put out by the CIA. It's the counterfeit <laughs> of the real thing. You have the real thing, which is the city of Enoch coming down, like aliens invading the in the world, and then you have the counterfeit, which is and, the fake version that the and CIA And doing that out. because when they resurrect the Antichrist, people will <laughs> finally be able to accept crazy and that's going to be the weirdest episode oh when yeah we record that yeah we did if this one's not the weirdest already oh no no, no. We, we've done we've done you know sean bailey's take on the end of the world <laughs> mine i've got mine and we're resurrecting the antichrist george they already have nori his body. step aside the wa- george nori and Washington, david Ike. dc has the, the body of the antichrist right now the, on oh, ice. <laughs> wow ice. okay yeah. it like okay. wow well you Next know it looks like Disney. Looks like we're going to have a lot of fun on the other side of this uh, commercial break. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let us know where we go wrong, uh, what you guys think, and uh, let's keep the conversation going. And you can check us out. On, yep, Brad, you got something to say? Oh, in the comments, I just want to hear how people like define the seven seals. Oh, I'd yes. be really fascinated to see what other ways people demarcate those. Yes, awesome. Okay, if you guys haven't checked us out, you can check us out on YouTube, or you can check us out on wardradio.com. Right there,